everybody? We've got a really small, intimate group, so that's nice. <laughs> we usually say, well, we can't really take individual questions, but we can probably handle anything. So I just wanted to sort of welcome you and start this program off to give you a little quick overview. Um, I've got some pretty simple messages, really, for you to take and then probably share with, with your friends. And, you know, you would think that with all the, the hype and the uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month and everything that you see in the media, that uh, this wouldn't be an issue before, but uh, by now, but I still, every day, have to reiterate to everyone how important it is to have good, good screening, get your mammograms, ultrasounds as needed, and that really is the key now for treating breast cancer. So quick quiz, since we got a small group. I'm gonna ask you a question and give me the, you've kind of been programmed to answer this question in a certain way, and so uh, I wanna see what comes to mind. When I ask you, hey, is there a cure for cancer? She shook her head no immediately. All right. She shook her head yes. So I think everything you see in the news media, the tagline is all, you know, Walter Cronkite would say, exciting new news in the race to cure cancer, which clearly means there's not a cure. And nothing could be further from the truth. With all cancers, and cancers are just cells that are growing out of control, with all cancers now in America, we cure two out of three of every cancer of every type. With breast cancer, we do even better than that. Um, with early stage breast cancer, some of the earliest detection of breast cancer, we have a better cure rate for the earliest stages of breast cancer than we do for pneumonia. So 98% cure rates for uh, some of the earliest stages of breast cancer. So clearly, if you let that same problem grow and get further advanced, then the cure rates go down. All right, so take that information digest it, and then you see quickly that the most important thing is early detection, right? Because if, if you have a problem, it's not gonna go away. The idea of, I have got a problem, I don't wanna know about it, and I'm just not gonna have a mammogram done, is really a head in your, and, you know, it's kind of a head in the sand approach, and it doesn't work because the problem is not gonna disappear on its own. It's gonna become a bigger problem, and what's gonna happen is we're gonna take something that we could cure, cure, not treat, but cure, make go away and never come back and it can turn into a problem then that can be much more difficult to treat and much more difficult to cure. Fortunately, in a community of our size, we have the luxury of what is really a regional medical center and we have great equipment and great facilities, particularly for women's health and particularly for breast care. Um, the guys today are gonna detail some more information about what we have available to us, but I think we really take for granted the facilities um, and the resources that we have available here in Henry County versus a lot of other small towns of our size. So I urge everyone to take advantage of those facilities, take advantage of the equipment that we have, take advantage of the services and let everybody you know to do the same so that we can continue to cure people and continue to get better. So with early detection, you know, back in the day we should say do your, do your self exams every month um, and then have your mammograms. We've really even sort of trended away from self exams because I never want a woman to ever have a problem in her breast that gets big enough for you to feel. I want to find that and detect that when it's tiny, when it's a grain of sand, not when it's a lump that's big enough for you to feel. So the emphasis now really is on screening, um, routine mammograms and early screening to find these things when they're small. Find these things when they're very early on so we have a better chance of curing them. And we have state-of-the-art equipment here that allows us to do that and literally detect things that are a grain of sand in size. When something is detected, then we at Parasurgical Specialists, myself, Dr. Compton, and Dr. Harper um, are involved in treating breast issues. Dr. Lumberg doesn't do uh, breast surgery. But the three of us then work with the hospital and we have facilities like ultrasounds. We have a brand new stereotactic breast biopsy machine that's just been installed in the hospital and um, I give the hospital a lot of credit. We had a company that we worked with for years that brought a machine from out of town and that company went out of business and your hospital stepped up to get a new machine, get the facilities, go through all the state certification to have that installed and available to women here in Henry County. So that was um, a really nice thing for the hospital to do to support healthcare here, particularly for women. So we have those machines available and what those allow us to do is literally go and with just a needle stick and some numbing medicine in five to ten minutes, go in and find that grain of sand and vacuum it out and do that biopsy where you get up and have a band-aid and going on about your business. 
Whereas back in the day when I first started here, that would have required someone to go to the operating room, be put to sleep, have an incision, recover from anesthesia, take time off from work and, and go through that process. And that's now a, a process that can be done with pinpoint accuracy with uh, usually little to no recovery, five minutes of your time in a Band-Aid. So then hopefully you do that biopsy um, with the serotactic machine or we use the ultrasound or whatever we need and hopefully that's all benign. But if it's not benign, then we have the, the facilities, the skills and resources here to do whatever needs to be done surgically. Again, traditionally that meant having breasts removed and doing a lot of radical surgery. And nowadays you don't have to have your breasts removed necessarily. You have options and choices. And oftentimes we can treat breast cancer with just a small incision just to remove the tumor. And we can use um, additional treatments like radiation treatments to help prevent problems down the road. On that subject then, our cancer care center has right now, they're undergoing the installation of a brand new linear accelerator, a machine that provides that radiation treatment, uh, which will be state of the art. And again, something that communities this size usually can't um, brag about having, and we have those things here. Um, in addition to what I told you about the stereotactic unit, we've been working with the hospital, and we've got a table over here. So let's say, heaven forbid, you do have a breast cancer. It does require a mastectomy. There are options for reconstructions, which we can provide here locally in some instances. And if you choose not to have reconstruction, then um, we now have the ability to have you form fitted and have a custom bra made and a prosthetic made for any women who've had mastectomies in the past or who may have mastectomies in the future. Before the hospital stepped up, so they, again, there's a lot of hoops to jump through with these things, a lot of certifications uh, and a lot of manpower to get this done. It wasn't available here. You had to travel to Jackson to get that done. These are all things that are covered by your insurance and all now things that can be done here. And we're really happy to be able to package what we think now is approaching a complete breast care center. Um, and one of the things I'm going to be working on in the new year with the hospital is doing just that to sort of bring that together and make sure that the public's aware of the resources and the facilities that we have here that have really fleshed out nicely and come together just over the last year. So all that's there. That's all your resource, but none of that can help a single patient without the early detection, right? So it's incumbent upon you and your family and your friends to spread the word that get your mammogram, get your screening, everything will probably be fine, but if it's not, the earlier you know about it, the better. And the earlier we know about it, the better chance we have of curing whatever process is going on. And also, my goal is to keep doing this lecture long enough and keep making progress that I come here one day and ask that question, is there a cure for cancer? And everybody in the audience shakes their head yes, <laughs> right, instead of no. We're getting there one step at a time. We've got more work to do. We want to keep getting better, and we're going to keep working in that direction. But um, I wanted to just give you that encouragement, give you that update. Also, I would let you know, too, the other great thing about anything that, does, that deals with breast or women's health or breast cancer, there was a... <clears throat> 1998 Federal Health Care Act that mandates that all insurance companies not only cover any surgery related to breast cancer but also cover any surgeries related to reconstruction or anything that needs to be done to provide symmetry or even things up in a woman who's had, who's had a mastectomy or surgery like that and so that is not a choice that the insurance companies have they can no longer you know dump a patient that's been diagnosed with breast cancer or deny those things so that's a federal law and that's a nice thing. So with a woman dealing with breast cancer, all the other things that she has to deal with and all the decisions that she has to make, she doesn't have to worry about insurance coverage um, in that regard. And the last thing I'll say is I also work with the, the local health care department and there's a program called the Tennessee Breast and Cervical Program. Um, and so if you know someone who is maybe not getting their mammograms or not getting screening done because of financial reasons, I would encourage you to refer them then to the healthcare department to let them help them along and see if we can eliminate that barrier to make sure that everyone's getting the screening and, and uh, the, the checkups that they need. So with that, again, thanks for being here. And what I'm going to do is I'll turn the program over to the other fine folks here, and they're going to give you some more details um, about the facilities that I mentioned and the resources available. Anytime you have questions, of course, our office is right by the hospital. 
parasurgical specialists on the way up um, to the emergency room, um, and uh, we have our staff there, and, and the doctors there are, are glad to help you or, or anyone else out anytime. time. Right. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Joe Walton. I'm the director of the imaging department here at Henry County Medical Center, and um, I just wanted to make sure everybody got some of our goodie bags. This is to help celebrate um, the mammography uh, breast cancer awareness month. Okay, got your nice little uh, cup and a uh, little bag of goodies here. If you didn't get one, just let me know. I'll make sure you get one. Okay. Um, as Dr. Boyd mentioned, um, the hospital has just—it's been very supportive of, of, of the breast cancer awareness month. Um, not only that, but also our equipment, our facilities that we have. I feel like we have top-notch equipment. I feel like we have very uh, qualified employees and um, technicians that, that will take care of you when you come. Um, and the screenings, yes, we do screening mammograms. Uh, that'd be your first step. You know, see your doctor. Your doctor determines you need a screening mammogram. You come for your mammogram. Um, if everything is, is clear with no questions, then, then you're finished for a year. Uh, if not, then the radiologist who reads your exam, if, if they see something on this exam, then they may have questions. You have to come back for what we call a diagnostic mammogram. Um, diagnostic is usually the second step. Um, we do have uh, new equipment available now. We have, um, it's called tunnel synthesis or 3D mammography. Um, it, it gives better detail, sometimes a little earlier detection. Um, if you have it done with your screening exam, it may prevent you from coming back from a diagnostic exam. It's very confusing um, when, you, when you start looking at your insurance and will they pay, will they not pay. Insurance will pay for your screening exam. Um, but whenever you look at the 3D tunnel synthesis, it's a new technology. Most insurances pay for it, but not all insurances pay for it. So that's something you might want to check out with your insurance company to see if that's available to you as an option um, for, during your screening process. Um, after you've had a diagnostic mammogram, if they still are uncertain, then you may have an ultrasound that gives the doctor, the radiologist, more information about what you may have going on. Um, and that can determine whether you need to go, you know, see your surgeon, as, as Dr. Boyd said, and further your treatment or your um, stereotactic biopsy or just watch it, you know, all that, all that comes into play with the radiologist and the surgeon together. So it's kind of a, a group effort. It's not just you, so we pass you from one doctor to the next and that's it. They kind of work together to try to get, give you the whole picture and get you the health care that you need. So um, I think that's all I have on our, on our things that we offer. Does anybody have any questions about any of our services that we offer? No? All right. Hi. I'm Jeff Tucker. I'm the director of Henry County Medical Center's at Home Equipment. Uh, we have just recently started our post mastectomy services and are extremely excited about being able to partner with uh, Parasurgical, uh, the hospital, uh, and everyone involved in, in women's health. Um, we just started our service earlier this year. We have uh, gained our certification through the insurances, Medicare most importantly, um, to be able to provide these services to, to clients of, of Parasurgical and, and Henry County Medical Center. I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to our uh, mastectomy fitter, Ms. Tracy Morgan. Tracy is an RN with our hospice unit, uh, but volunteered to take on the task of being our fitters, and she gained her certification last year, and we're excited about Tracy's uh, involvement with this. Uh, we, we've always tried in our department not only to, to provide services, but to establish relationships, because we just feel it's important to not only be a, be a supplier, but to be a friend as well. So, if you ever have any questions or any concerns uh, regarding mastectomy, Tracy is available to, to answer those questions and, and to meet with you at any time. So we've talked about, with Dr. Boyd, the early detection, uh, some of the screening processes. We've talked to Joe about um, the test, diagnostic tests that are done. 
once the uh, mastectomy has been performed, what's life like after that? Where do you go from there? Well, we hope your first stop is with us. Um, I was speaking with Dr. Bordelon earlier, and there's a process of between four and six weeks after mastectomy takes place that you take time to heal. Uh, you take that time to get, get your strength back uh, for the surgical site to heal up, and then you're ready to move on to the next step. And that next step is post mastectomy supplies. And I'm talking about forms, both uh, foam and, and silicone forms, uh, bras, different types of prosthetics, just different products to, uh, to aid you in, in the healing and, and the rest of your life. Um, we deal with four major companies that are out now, Jody, uh, American Breast Care, Amona, and True Life are the four that we're dealing with now. Um, wide array of products, the, the uh, forms themselves have transformed greatly over uh, the past 15 to 20 years. Uh, now, depending on the type of mastectomy that you have, there are forms that are made to fit any type of surgery that's been done to give you a more natural look and a more comfortable feel. Uh, as far as allowables on those go, the silicone form, you're allowed to get one of those every two years. If you have a bilateral mastectomy, then it's two forms every two years. Your per permaform, which is a, a form that's built into a bra that is, is not removable from the bra. You can get one of those every six months. And as far as the bras go, Medicare says as many as necessary. Uh, what we found is, is usually four per year uh, that Medicare will cover. And they come in different styles, different types, different sizes. Um, of course, they've got everything from sports bras to wired bras to non-wired bras. It's just, I'm a man and don't understand all of that. I just know that there's a lot of pages in the book. So there are a lot of choices out there for, for, for what you want, what would fit your lifestyle better. So again, just to wrap everything up, we've, we've seen from the beginning, early detection, doing your testing. We've talked about coming and having your diagnostic testing done. We've talked to Dr. Boyd about the surgical procedures and now post mastectomy services. So what I'm most proud of is that everything that involves this is done here. It's here at home. So you're not traveling somewhere to, to visit with a doctor to see if you need some testing done. You don't have to go out of town to have your testing done. You don't have to go out of town to get your products after your surgery. Your surgery is done here. So very proud to be a part of, of Women's Health. Uh, hope we do you proud. We, uh, we look forward to uh, serving you. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to call us. We do have our table set up here in the back that have some of the products. Feel free to look.